Hello and welcome to the Tech Risk Innovators Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Manier, and our aim here is to be the source for the latest trends, developments, cutting edge technology that's revolutionizing the insurance industry. We're bringing together the best and the brightest industry professionals to discuss critical topics that matter to business operators, risk managers, and insurance professionals. So sit back, relax with our first guest uh, today. We welcome Brett Carruthers. Uh, Brett is the Senior Vice President of Risk Management and the Director of Right Risk Management, Director of Innovation, I should say, and has had an amazing career spanning decades of experience in workplace safety, public school risk management, and school violence prevention. He's also led risk teams around the country on both East and West Coasts, supported safety efforts at Ground Zero at 9-11, and served as a paramedic supervisor performing complex rescues from vehicles and industrial accidents. And uh, it's a pleasure, Brett, to welcome you to our first episode of the Tech Risk Innovators podcast. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you for your, the, the kind words and uh, the beautiful introduction. It's uh, as you reflect on some of that, it's been interesting. Some of the things that I've been able to do over the course of my career, you know, it's been uh, very rewarding and uh, very challenging. Uh, I, I, I know after our, you know our conversations uh, the past you know months, um, you know we've gotten to know a little bit more about each other. Uh, something we have in common is that. We both kind of grew up around Western Pennsylvania, and then ended up in uh, in, in Western New York somehow. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, your background there and 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 the transition? I think what's interesting is uh, grew up in Western Pennsylvania, uh, went to school in Western Pennsylvania, graduated when. Uh, uh, the steel industry fell apart in in Western Pennsylvania, and you know industry was on the demise, and uh, there weren't a lot of jobs. And I ended up with an opportunity to move to Arizona, uh, work on a very complex uh, job that it you know was involving uh, the U.S. Air Force's ballistic missile office doing research and development in the middle of the Loop Gunnery Range. We we're testing the super hardness of concrete to withstand a direct hit from a nuclear warhead. So it was a very interesting work. Uh, a lot of it was classified. Uh, and from there, I migrated to the West Coast and worked for Kemper and uh, had a great learning experience there, got a lot of good experience there. But, yeah. you know, I, I think Growing up in Western Pennsylvania, Western New York is very similar. I wanted to get back to my roots, get back to an area that had similar values as to what I grew up with. And I, I came to work for Occidental Chemical, figuring I'd be here uh, for a year and be moved someplace and ended up uh, moving here. And what is it now? 34 years later, I'm still here. I moved here. I met my future wife and uh right. we've been married almost 33 years and have raised our family here so it's western new york's home and it's yeah. a, a great place to be yeah no that's terrific now we uh we we love it uh we love we love our, our niagara falls and uh <laughs> all of the all the the, the uh, fall traditions here uh we're coming up on fall it's sweater weather and uh and and in that right, it's back to school season, and I know, uh, you know, your phone doesn't stop <laughs> ringing, uh, First, especially please. especially during the school season. Can you can you tell a little uh, us a little bit about um, kind of how how you got your uh, how you got your start working uh, in in uh, in the education realm? I I, I, w I began working for the local ambulance service where I grew up uh, as an EMT. When I was still in high school and I became one of the youngest paramedics ever certified in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, some of the people I had ambitions that I, I wanted to be a fire protection engineer and some of the guys that I worked with at the ambulance service, they were in the safety science program uh, at the local university. And they said, you know, you need to go check this out. Well, 
I did, and I liked it. And what's kind of interesting, there were seven of us in my high school class that all enrolled and graduated from the safety science program. So the incoming class that we were part of, uh, we were seven of 25 uh, new enrollees in, in the class that we graduated in the, uh, you know, in 83, which was kind of interesting that, you know, 30% of the class came from one school, uh, which was, you know, real interesting. And all of us are still uh, within the profession. And, and, and it just, you know, and then it's grown from there. You know, as you said, the first couple of weeks of the new school year with the program that I'm involved with are always a little bit challenging, working out the kinks of the new school year, getting people back into ritual and routines. And just always a host of questions, uh, construction work wrapping up. There's just uh, always a lot of loose ends. And, you know, our team is very, very busy with all of that. And we do a tremendous amount of training you know, these first couple of weeks of the new school year. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's about, uh, you know, getting back to, uh, you know, a busy, a busy time. Um, and, and the challenges that, uh, many schools faced, uh, how, how have you seen, uh, some of the, the challenges and risks, uh, in, in school buildings that you're associated with, especially in New York, how have you seen the challenges change or, or evolve, um, over time? Well, I, I think one of the things to you see a little more of is you, you're, you're beginning to see the effects of, uh, frankly, how climate change is impacting so many different areas uh, of our life. And when I look at the property side of our business, uh, Mother Nature is, is very challenging. Uh, our, our program is a very unique program in that we're licensed only to write uh, insurance coverage in New York State, only for public schools. Uh, the, the big five uh, cannot be part of our program, uh, nor can private schools or charters. So it's a very, it's a limited market. It's a very unique market, but when you look at New York State, New York State's a pretty big state. Uh, you know, we have districts from Niagara Falls to the east end of Long Island, from the Canadian border to the Pennsylvania border, and everywhere in between. And you have all kinds of different weather exposures. We have high wind, we have blizzards, we have heavy snow. Uh, you know, we have a large portion of our uh, program that uh, is exposed to you know potential tropical storms and hurricanes so it's you know the weather piece is very daunting and you know as those you know as mother nature you know continues and as these cha things change i mean it puts a lot of strain on our buildings uh puts a lot of strain you know on a lot of things and then you look at some of the other effects of you know, climate change and these perils. It certainly has an impact on the reinsurance market. It has impacts on supply chain. Uh, so it, it creates an awful lot of challenges there. I mean, another challenge that we're looking at, which is evolving our electric batteries and lithium ion batteries, or with the electric vehicles and lithium ion batteries. Um, the electrical vehicle, electric vehicles are not going to go away. It's how do we, you know, ensure safe charging where we're not exposing a whole fleet uh, to a vehicle, which, you know, if there were a problem uh, where you could lose an entire fleet, lose a structure, or have, have a fire spread to other structures. You know, so we, we have, the, we face these challenges on a couple levels. You have the, the electric buses, uh, you have staff that are driving electric vehicles and, you know, they're looking for some kind of uh, charging arrangements, which uh, gets a little bit tricky on school property. Uh, you have students with electric bikes and electric scooters where you need to have safe areas to store those. And then when you 
look in our maintenance operations, uh, you look at the tools that our, you know, the maintenance trades are using, and almost all of them are using lithium ion batteries, and there's very few corded tools. And you're starting now to see more of the, you know, the higher voltage, the 18 volt, the 40 volt, and, and, and some of the higher voltages being used. And all of that creates other, uh, you know, hazards and perils that, you know, we're, we're working on solutions. And some of those solutions right now are not real easy to come by. So there's a lot going on. And, you know, you always face constant change and constant challenge. And, you know, that's a good thing. We we do a pretty good job finding solutions and uh, working to make things better. Yeah, and 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 speaking of of you know overcoming those challenges and finding solutions, uh, you know, can can you give us uh, a little bit of a real world uh, example or or a story of you know uh, uh, a, a successful outcome where. Uh, a preventive maintenance or, or or risk management strategy was was deployed and and it and it, and it led to uh, you know some, some success. I, think they, I, think I have a couple that come to mind. I mean, one of them is I'm always looking to leverage technology to benefit the program and benefit make make you know work smarter. And one of the things that we have. We started with as a pilot program, uh, we're now approaching our fourth year, was the use of the, the internet of thing or IOT sensors uh, to detect temperature and, and the presence of water. Uh, our program has expanded uh, um, you know, immensely and we're now in the middle of a, a pretty big rollout, but with these IOT sensors, you know, position where we can detect uh, negative temperature deltas, where we can detect the presence of water, where we don't want water. It enables our members to be notified in a in a rapid manner, depending on you know the type of alarm and the type of alert. Uh, some of it is stair step uh, when it comes to water, any water or immediate telephone calls. So. Because we don't really have a lot of time, you know, we, you know, time is of the essence there. Uh, the, the, those sensors have helped us. I mean, we we estimate that we've been able to mitigate between five and seven million dollars in losses uh, because of the use of the sensors, and we hope to be able to, you know, to continue that pathway and and, and do more loss mitigation there. Uh, you know, because it, it helps, it certainly will, will help our property insurance program, but it'll also help our members because as you get into these water losses, you know, they create disruption. Uh, you know, in some instances, students may have to be displaced. Uh, try to keep things where school does not have to, you don't have to have emergency closures for a couple of days and, and disrupt a whole lot of other things. Uh, as we look at some other things, you know, from a technology standpoint, uh, our online university, uh, our members, uh, a lot of them use it for you know, their their back to school, their mandated training, which is awesome. But we have a lot of other uh, programming there uh, that they can take advantage of. Uh, last year, we moved to a new platform. Uh, and moving to that platform. Uh, we went from about 70,000 completions in the, the 2021 school year to last year, 2020, you know, in the 22 to 23 school year, uh, just a, a tick or two below 250,000 uh, completed courses, which was just incredible. And, you know, looking at the early numbers for 23, 24, we're but we're on a pace already to, uh, you know, to exceed last year's number, which, you know, it, it's awesome and, and it's and it's good because it's getting quality programming uh, to the members and to their employees. Uh, it allows them to fulfill their mandated training requirements, but also gives them a, an excellent base uh, from that standpoint. And. Yeah. You know, the other piece that we've been able to very fortunate and, you know, we're still on the, 
you know, the upswing with this is, you know, the, you know, we have the availability of uh, Helix and all the many benefits that the Helix program has uh, for our facilities managers. And I mean, it's a game changer and it, it is something that as the program evolves and as our members collectively understand all the different things that it can do for them, uh, it's going to make them be able to work smarter. It's going to make their building smarter. Um, it will aid them in uh, replacing equipment, probably in a timelier fashion, uh, and, and also along with that, reap some pretty significant savings with the different rebates and the other programs that uh, can be found through Helix. You know, and then you have the equip, you know, the maintenance tracking. You have some of the purchasing. Uh, pieces to it. Uh, there, there's just a tremendous number of, you know, value adds there that for, excuse me, our maintenance folks are going to be incredible. Yeah, no, I appreciate you saying uh, and mentioning uh, Helix Intel. Um, you know, we've, we've gotten the chance to, to, to get to know um, the organization and, and, and nicer and really the, 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 the breadth of schools that you touch, uh, just school districts alone, or hundreds and hundreds of school districts. Uh, and one, uh, you know, you mentioned just one example of, you know, how, how water plays a big role in, um, in, in, in either averting that a disaster, uh, or, you know, sometimes uh, we can't control mother nature, like you said. And uh, can you tell me, a, a situation where, you know, proactive measures were in place, but, you know, you can expect the unexpected. So that's where you come in, right? Um, in, One of the things help, from helping. the blizzard this year, there was a, a, a very interesting uh, situation is, you know, as you know, here in Western New York, it's, you know, we hit, we've, uh, the, the prevailing wind is a Southwest wind. Uh, one of our members that was, you know, in the area pretty, you know, significantly impacted by uh, the blizzard, uh, they, they had their buses parked. Now they have an open yard, but they had the doors facing the southwest exposure. Well, you know, as the winds picked up on, on Friday morning and, and ran through Christmas Day night, I mean, we, we had sustained winds, you know, between 40 and 50 miles an hour, and there were recorded gusts between 70 and 80 miles an hour. With, you know, the snowfall part was kind of interesting. The snowfall was probably only between probably 12 and 18 inches, but it was the, the wind that was the factor. Well, one of the things that occurred in this particular district was because of the wind, it popped the doors on the buses and it filled them with snow. Now it was, it, it was real interesting to see the pictures and you see these full size buses filled with snow and not, not something that you would expect. Now, fortunately the loss part of it, there was, it was, you know, the loss part there was, you know, getting to the buses, getting them dug out, you know, get them inside and get everything dried out, which they were able to do. But it, it was a, an interesting lesson. You, you take a lot of, you know, proactive steps. You, you get everything organized in the yard. You have them parked. And, you know, not necessarily something you would have thought of that the wind would have popped, you know, the doors on some of the buses and filled them with snow. And, you know, so now, you know, lesson learned and going forward, okay, you know, park your buses and make sure the doors are not, you know, facing the prevailing wind with it. So that was kind of one. I mean, at the time, it wasn't very funny, but, you know, you can sit back now, you know, nine months later and look at it and say, uh, that was interesting. That's something you're not going to see every day. No, certainly not. Certainly not. And yeah, like you said, the New York, uh, it, it we get everything uh so so you got to be prepared uh, or or uh or a member of uh, a risk organization that you can rely on to 
for some advice and, and help when you need it, uh, which is, um, you know, you just, you just had a, uh, a symposium uh, in, um, I believe, in August. Is that right? Can you tell us a little bit more about, about you know, that? And We started doing symposia six years ago. And, uh, you know, it, it gives us an opportunity to take uh, a, a topic that you know, has significant impact on the program and on our members. And, you know, with, with the education community being a, an evidence-based community, I mean, districts, you know, they, they, they base their curriculums and they choose curriculums that are evidence-based. It gives us an opportunity to kind of do the same thing and bring together some really good, strong thought leaders and, and do a very concentrated program uh, on the focus area. I mean, this year, uh, we re we returned to, to school violence prevention, which was part of our uh, president's initiative this past year. And I mean, we did a number of things to support our members, which, you know, when it comes to school violence prevention, we've been doing this. I, I wrote the fir our first violence prevention manual in 1998, which was a year before Columbine. So school violence prevention has been something that has been at our foundation. And uh, we, we had, you know, so the focus of it was on that. We were very fortunate to have two members of the U.S. Secret Service, uh, one from their research team, one from their uh, community outreach team, uh, talk about their latest research that they've done. And, you know, they have put together an excellent mm -hmm. Uh, threat assessment program uh, that it is much more easier for schools to use. Um, and, you know, they, they spoke about that and did a very nice job. Uh, Dr. Peter Langman, uh, Peter is a friend, is a, is a psychiatrist. He has done forensic interviews of all the school shooters. Uh, from Columbine forward, some of them forensically, some of them he has done actual interviews with them. Uh, Peter uh, is just an incredible individual and a uh, very gifted speaker. And uh, the he, he speaks, you know, with firsthand knowledge of these different things and the warning signs and the other things that people need to look for. Now, we had we were fortunate. One of our a number of our districts do threat assessment. We had one, uh, one district that really is a model. And we had uh, two people from that district in Saratoga Springs talk about their threat assessment program. And so our members were able to hear firsthand from, you know, members that eat, sleep, and drink this along with their other duties and how it works in a district. And then our final uh, presenter, uh, Randy Russell, Randy's part of the alumni that you don't want to be part of. Uh, he was a superintendent of schools of a small, small rural school district in Washington mm -hmm. uh, that had a school shooting. And Randy, I mean, they're now almost six years post the incident. So it, it wasn't that we wanted Randy to rehash that. Randy has put together a very unique presentation on, on, on leadership. Uh, and things to be able, you know, good lessons for our, our, our members to learn from a leadership perspective and how to avoid some of these things. I mean, I heard Randy speak about 16, well, not now, it's about 14 months after the shooting. Mm -hmm. And it was very raw at that time with him. And the presentation that he did uh, was phenomenal. And to see how they have evolved and to see how, you know, looking at that presentation and then looking at what he did for us, I mean, it was extraordinary. So it was a great experience for our members. Um, and, you know, it, it's, you know, so we, we look to do those different types of things and tackle some of the tough areas from that standpoint. Yeah, and we certainly, you know, uh... We thank our all of our first responders and those that are are put in that position, and uh, certainly you and and Randy and others are so important in helping to bring those those really difficult topics uh, to the surface, uh, so that uh, lessons can be learned. 
uh, and uh, and these these certainly these uh, these risks uh, can can be mitigated now, and, and the, the dealt speaking with. first responders. I mean, our our members are so fortunate that they have such outstanding relationships with so many first responders across the state. Um, you know, law enforcement, emergency medical services, the fire service. I mean, we're we're really blessed with uh, just a, a tremendous group of people who you know protect and serve in in so many different ways, and you know are there to embrace the school community and also protect the school community. Yeah, and and, and I'm I'm very excited that uh, I kind of uh, October coming up in October uh, is is the, the annual uh, School Facility Management Institute. Conference of New York, the SFA conference, uh, and that's coming up. Uh, I know you'll be participating. Helix Intel will be there. Uh, I will be there along with my team, and we'll be able to uh, really uh, uh, talk to so many schools uh, uh, there. And I know that uh, a lot of um, a lot of the the, the leadership is, attends. Uh, maybe you could, uh, touch on a little bit about. Uh, what we could expect uh, at that conference. The SFA conference for us is uh, one of the most as important association events for, for my team. Uh, the, the facilities directors that you know, we work with in all of our member districts, I mean, they're, they're essential to our success. And, you know, their commitment, the assistance they provide our team, uh, I mean, it, it, it's invaluable. It, it, it creates, I mean, one of the things where we're different is N NICER is a true partnership. We're, we're owned by the school districts that are part of our program. You know, so it allows you to develop relationships over the years. Because uh, our, our members, uh, we've been in business 34 years. Uh, our uh, lifetime retention is over 99%, uh, and that speaks volumes about the program, and it speaks volumes about you know, the services we deliver, but also on the other side, uh, the, the individuals that we work with, because we work with a lot of wonderful people. Uh, the SFA conference, it's sold out both to vendors and to attendees. And, and the vendors there, one of the things you get to see uh, is a, a lot of leading edge, uh, a lot of technology. What's you know what's changing? I mean, obviously, Helix Intel is at the forefront of that. But you, you know, you see new products, you see different ways of you know for for solutions. So there there's a lot of other takeaways, and then you know there's the education piece to the conference, which uh, SFA always puts on an excellent show from that standpoint for for its membership. So it's a great three days in Saratoga and it's it's a very you know worthwhile experience uh you know for us and our team and you know I think your team will will enjoy it as well. Yeah, and I'm 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 very excited about it. Uh we'll we'll be uh we'll be there in attendance, stop by uh obviously stop by and see Brett uh at at his booth uh representing nicer and, and and right and uh, Helix Intel will be there. We'll have a vendor booth where you can come uh, and interact with um, uh, my team and also uh, Helix Intel application and what it has to offer. Uh, we you know, we offer a wide variety of, of solutions. However, the benefits to nicer uh, are, are 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 extreme uh, in that uh, the platform is is uh, being delivered by nicer at no cost is that right uh, it, it's a great opportunity and you know for you know our members i mean a number have taken advantage of it so far we have a seminar coming up next week to uh, update our members on where we are and and for those that have not started to participate yet give them a nice little overview and you know a little reminder of hey it's here uh and it's waiting when you're ready so, you know, that, that'll be good. I mean, Ben and Kevin, they'll, they'll do a great job next week with the, the seminar. I'm looking forward to seeing them on Wednesday. That's, that's terrific. And, and uh, yeah, and, and Brett, for those that, that might be uh, new to um, NICER or, or 
or new in general to this topic, you know, how can they best get in contact with with you and and your organization uh, to learn? Uh, they, more? they can reach. I mean, they they can reach me, uh, you know, by email, which is bcaruthers at nicer n y s i r dot org, or they can certainly uh, anybody can call me seven one six. 870-8516. So it's pretty easy to find and you know we uh certainly will answer anybody's question that calls or emails. Well, uh, I know I know you do because you always pick up the phone when I call, but uh <laughs> so, so I know you're you're available uh I know around the clock you must be uh to 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 help ever, all of these uh all of these schools and all of the professionals, um, risk risk uh, professionals, insurance professionals, and, and every everyone. I mean, that's what we're you know here to do. Uh, our, you know, our team we strive to be solutionist and yeah. and find solutions to the many challenges. I mean, it's it's easy to say no. What are we doing by doing that? Uh, we're not really serving our people. There there certainly are times where the answer may be no. But that shouldn't be the the go to answer and the easy button. And that's not what we're here for. I mean, we're here to support our members. We're here to, you know, enrich the school community, but also, you know, make these activities safe. You know, for the nine hundred fifteen thousand students that are part of our program. You know, that are you know covered by our program. That's very important. You know, to protect them, to protect the staff. Uh, and to protect the 345 districts and BOCES that are part of our program. Absolutely, and we 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 thank you uh, for for doing that and continuing uh, to help. And uh, and thank you again for for being part of our first episode. Of oh, thank Tech you, Mike, for the invitation. It was great. Uh, you know, it was an honor to be uh, the first guest. And you know, hopefully, uh, you know, you have other people that are better than I am down the road. So uh, thank you so much. It was an honor and a privilege to be here with you folks. Take care. Thanks so much, Brett. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.